I want to see. I look good. I look clean. Please, you know. Please, you know, you're Lee. not Bo. Bruce Stop Lee. it. Bruce Lee, right? Stop there. it. Do it, man. Come on. Don't play with him. Okay. How you doing? Uh, when I was talking to Muslims online, they said, go to your local mosques. Uh, maybe a mom or somebody would be open to talking to you in person about the prophets and stuff like that. And so that we just have interfaith dialogue. I'm a Christian. Okay, We're Christians here. So we was just basically asking like the basic questions. What do you, what do you believe about the prophets, uh, specifically like Jesus? Because uh, that's obviously for us Christians, it's the most important. Okay. Well, how do, you, how do you see Jesus? Um, well, no, definitely we believe that he's a very important figure in Islamic history and Islamic society. Yeah. And also his mother, you know, feast be upon her. You know, there's a whole chapter in the Quran named after her. Yeah, right? yeah, right? yeah. Um, there's a lot of respect giving to Jesus to where he's known as the word of God. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, yeah, I read that. I, I got my Quran too, so I, I, I read a lot about that, which has fascinated me. Yeah, I mean, definitely we have the utmost respect for Jesus. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, and he's a prophet of God. He's someone who is close to God. Yeah. Someone chosen by God. Obviously, we don't believe in his divinity. Mm -hmm. you know, we don't believe that he is the son of God. Yeah, yeah. We don't believe that he is God. You know, we don't believe in the Trinity. But yeah. Definitely, we do believe in the, you know, respecting mm -hmm. the status of Jesus. Yeah. And, uh, you know, we also apply that respect by, you know, trying to become, be like Jesus. Okay. You know, in, in his worship of God. For sure. And his obedience to God. So so this is, the, this is what's, like, um, gets me is, you know, the respect that you guys do have for the prophets. Like, I'm, I'm very familiar with it. Like, I've, I've, trust me, I've, I read the Quran. I've even re re looked into hadiths and stuff like that, tafsir. And so I look at commentaries and things of this nature. And um, a lot of times, even like when I see like Dawah booths online on YouTube and stuff, I see that they say that Jesus was a Muslim. Now, as a Christian, I'm like, whoa, what? You know, I thought that, you know, Islam didn't come until Muhammad. Right. So, but you know, so for you, obviously you believe that Jesus was a Muslim. You believe all the prophets were, were Muslims. Yeah. So demonstrate to me like why you believe that Jesus historically was a Muslim well I mean it's like uh, you look at Muslim from a different perspective it just is you know you're looking at modern-day Muslims mm -hmm. they associate with Islam so they're called Muslims yeah but you know Muslim in the sense that they fully submit to God mm -hmm. every single prophet every single person who believed in God yeah. is considered a Muslim okay uh, you know not in the sense that there is a technical religion with you know uh, bylaws and rules and regulations and these things but in the sense that in in principle they were all Muslim submitting themselves to God uh, understanding that there is no help you know that there is no uh, harm no good no bad no benefit that can come to them except through God yeah okay right? and so it's, a, it's a fundamental belief of one God yeah. submitting to that submitting one God, God and yeah. that's what you that's why you guys apply the definition of Muslim, Muslim. okay and that's what you know in Arabic Islam means submission okay you know obviously you know, some ind individuals say it means peace. Of one I've heard that word too, yeah. of Islam, salam means peace, mm -hmm. right? But Islam means to submit. Okay. Yeah. So, like, can I let, okay, so let's, because uh, this is interesting, so I want to challenge this a little bit, okay? So, with all the prophets believing in one God, which I obviously agree as well as a Christian, right? And they had the same message and stuff like that. Now, um, but when a Muslim says submit to one God and submit to the God, right? Um, that comes with a meaning. Like it can't just be any God that you say, right? I, I can't say that I submit to a statute and that's my one God and therefore I'm a Muslim, right? Like I, I it has to be the specific concept of God that we find yeah. really that you, you say in Islam and, and that you believe the rest of the prophets are taught, right? So, so just off of what I've seen, reading the Quran, I've seen, you know, um, like chapter 112, right? Uh, you know, he's he's uh, only one, right? Is he doesn't begin nor is begotten and stuff like that. Yeah. He has no children, he has no sons, he's not the father, right? So um, it's this is this particular concept of, of Allah, of God, that you have to submit to to be a Muslim, right? So, so then, yeah, so that would be my next question then is, so how would you demonstrate to me as a Christian, right, that Jesus submitted to the same concept of God that you as a Muslim submit to? Well, I mean, you know, we see, we for us to, we see in the Quran, right, mm -hmm. what Jesus said to God, what Isa alayhi salam said to Allah. You know, Allah is giving a, uh, a picture of what, what's going to happen on the Day of Judgment. Yeah. And he's going to ask him that, did you tell, did you, oh Jesus, tell your people to worship yourself and your mother, mm -hmm. or to take yourself and your mother as uh, God, or someone who has some sort of share in the divinity mm -hmm. of God. And so he, you know, Jesus will reply, Isa alayhi salam, he will reply. He will say that, you know, if I did this, then you would you would know. Mm -hmm. You know, now from the beginning now, Jesus is submitting to God, mm -hmm. from the beginning, in terms of applying the fact that, you know, and affirming the fact that no knowledge 
uh, escapes God. There's nothing that can escape Allah. Yeah. You know, no, Allah knows everything. You yeah. Know, Allah encompasses everything. Yeah. Uh, and then from the aspect that forgive, and then he says, says you know, alayhi salam, he says that forgiveness is in your hand. Mm. Punishment is in your hand. So, you know, he is submitting from before. And then in Surah Maryam, chapter 19, right. Yeah. He says, inni abdullah. That I am the slave of Allah when he's in, you know, he's a, he's a child. When he's baby. born. Mm -hmm. Right. So this is him submitting to God from the beginning, from mm -hmm. the birth all the way till the end. Now, now Besides, we see. So I understand that from a Quranic perspective, right? Now, if we were to, if you were to demonstrate that to me as a Christian, because like as a Christian, I don't necessarily believe in the Quran. I, I'm reading it I, and I'm seeing, I'm seeing its claims. I see what it says about Jesus, right? I see it says that he's a slave of Allah, believed in Allah, things of this nature. Now, as a Christian, I would be like, okay. Does this match historically with Jesus, though? Because I see the claim. Now, how, how would how would you demonstrate to me as a Christian, like, yes, like historically, you know, Jesus, this was Jesus's beliefs. This was Jesus's how he practices religion. Well, I mean, for that, you know, it's it, it takes some time. Obviously, you know, mm -hmm. it was a lot longer discussion, lengthier discussion. Yeah. Uh, in the uh, um, validity of, of the scriptures, the validity of the you know narrations of certain of history of the history of Jesus, mm. the history of Christianity, and all and all these things. Yeah. So, you know, like to be completely honest, with you, I can't at the moment show you anything or okay. give you anything from That's, a historical that, I love perspective, that honest perspective where Jesus, you know, um, submitted to God mm -hmm. simply because you know you would. Uh, you know, it's history. It's historical. Yeah. It's, it's not validated. So, right? so this this is what I would say too. Because, and first of all, I want to I appreciate your honesty on that. Like, not trying to just give well, an I mean, answer. Like, to give. It, it would take a while. Like, yeah, it, there's a whole take some time. Not just, but it, there's a whole like discussion that that's had. You know, there's, mm -hmm. I'd have to present with present you with you know uh, facts and narrations and mm -hmm. these things, things that I just don't have on me right now. Yeah, that's that's fine. That's fine. I understand. So, so, so with this topic, then, because um, when, when I read the Quran, because you mentioned validity of the scriptures, right? And so another thing that was important to me was how the Quran talks about the previous scriptures. Um, and so how it says that we're supposed to follow the gospel, the Torah was revealed from Allah, and things of this nature, and you know, um, even you know, the Quran and Muhammad's coming is in the scriptures, so the Jews and Christians have no reason to reject them, right? Do, are you of the opinion, though, because I've, I've heard this, that the scriptures, the Torah and the gospel have been corrupted? Yes. Okay. So, so now this, I, I believe we could take a, do you have a, well, you know, my Quran is in the car, but you know, this is, this, I love this subject because from what I see, I see that the Quran says the, the opposite, that the scriptures are preserved. What you, go, go ahead. Talk, talk to me. Well, no, I mean, yeah, I, I think, you know, you're, you're maybe, you know, you haven't read the Quran fully in depth. You know, there's. There's the mentioning where Allah mentions, you know, they, that the people of the books, they did tahrif. Well, tahrif is switching up the words, you know, distorting the, the language and all of that, you know. Let, let's talk about that. And they were, you know, distorting, doing tahrif mm -hmm. uh, of the of the words from their places. Meaning they were distorting the message in the true word. So. Right. No, I saw that's, that's, that's good right there. Because I, I checked that verse. I think that's in chapter 5, verse like 13 or 14, one of those verses. But uh, what's up, man? Yeah. Yeah, we're good. Yeah, uh, wanna... three minutes I'm going live that one. Okay. So we're going to hook up, right? Oh uh, yeah. You, you didn't want to talk? Uh, no, I mean you're talking. He's this the mom, man. He's 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 open for a conversation. He's it's awesome. Yeah, we're, we're talking about he's much the. Nicer than he looks. <laughs> don't, don't, <laughs> talking, we're, we're talking about whether or not the Quran talks about if the scriptures have been corrupted. And so he talked about the verse about how. They're changing from their from their places. No, no, it's not YouTube. Yeah. The camera adds like 50 pounds, so I don't want oh, to. This is stupid. Let me, before you move on, were you born Muslim? I'm just curious. Yes. Okay, so are you South Asian? Oh, uh, yeah. So either Indian or Pakistani. Okay. Hmm. You're the Imam here? Yeah. Not to go off topic, what does Am Amir Ana mean? That, um, just named after the individual that bought this place and donated I for see. the masjid. Yeah. Well, they just. Yeah, so honor and respect. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. So you guys are talking about scripture. He brought up what facet? Oh, he, he mentioned how the Quran, not specific passage, but he mentioned how the Quran talks about how they, you know, change words from the right places. Like, and he said like they distort the meanings and interpretations of it and stuff like that. So that's basically where we're where we're at. So it was just about to touch I mean, on it's that. It's very hard when you don't have like the Quran or the Bible to show verse because I know what the verses you're referring to. Mm -hmm. Most properly that the Muslims use will be chapter three verse seventy eight. But it says they distort it with their tongue. So obviously that's an interpretation, not the text, right? Well, I mean, still, you know, um, uh, distorting doesn't just like writing wasn't as common as you know back then as it is now. Yeah, for so the, for the Arabs, the way, you mean? for anybody, right? So preservation was most. I mean, 
just because it was there's it mentions that they're distorting with the tongue doesn't negate the fact that there was distortion of text hmm. right you know it doesn't negate uh, yeah. that fact. well the reason why i say that because even by the time muhammad you had already thousands of copies of the bible in various languages you had it in latin you had it in syriac you had it in sahira coptic you had it in greek and hebrew and so you also had two communities, you had the Jews and the Christians. The Jews were following their scriptures, and the Christians took their scriptures as part of their. So no Jew would agree with a Christian to corrupt the Jewish scriptures to agree with Christian theology. Mm. So, I mean, they wouldn't agree with that. Are you busy because you're looking yeah, at Yeah, I'm going to have to. All right. Yeah, All right. So. Um, well, they would come back and talk. I don't know. You know, know where Why don't you do this? You Take you information. If you have a Muslim da'i, yeah, yeah. someone who's trained in, like, the No, apologia. definitely, yeah, you know. Let them meet uh, yeah, him. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah we'll, I'll yeah, definitely talk to them. Yeah. 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 So, I, if, you, if you have anybody, I, uh, yes. is there a way to reach them or to contact them? you can contact them. Because I'm sure you have You don't have to give me their numbers. Like, emails or something. Definitely. Do you have a card or something? I don't have a card, but you can just call this message. It's forwarded to my phone. Okay. So, Days that I don't answer, you just have to try another day and okay. I'll answer them. But you are aware of people who do dawah. Yeah, yeah, they're okay. good. Okay. For sure, yeah. Well, hey, I, what was your name again, my brother? Sherry Yar. Sherry Yar. I definitely appreciate Sherry? the conversation. Sherry Yar. Sherry Yar. Sherry Yar, nice. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, I think it's better to set him up tomorrow and he'll be willing to talk. Okay, so let's do it. You want to, yeah. Well, yeah, it's up to you. I don't okay. want to because it's your, it's your, you know, like the parade. Man, you here, man. You, you, you in Vegas, you're our guest, man. All right, so I'm going to go live in 40 minutes. After that, I'm done. Are you recording me, bro? Yeah, I'll we're recording you, man. We're getting out of here, man. Hold on, man. Hold on. I'm not going to lie to you, man. You kind of look a little. For what? You've been, you been doing, <laughs> you've been doing this thing here, man. Let me see. see. Let's uh, go ahead and do it. This. I haven't hit weights in a while, but I got to do this. I got to <laughs> see, bro. Come on, man. <laughs> see that, bro? See? Come on now. Yeah, that's tough, man. That's why you're What's up? What's up? What's up? That's oh, why the imam see. had to go. <laughs> so. He only does chess. And I haven't done no working out about it. So everybody, I better not look fat, dude. If I do, I'm going to sue you. <laughs> a question on the Bible, if it's possible. In Matthew 21, 11. Yeah, he says, says the prophet, right? Uh, and the multitude said, this is Jesus the prophet. Wow. Yeah. You stumped me, Hisham. So Matthew 21, 11 says that Jesus is a prophet. Wow. <laughs> Are you saying that because people said Jesus is a prophet, that means he's not God in the flesh and he's not the son of God? I mean, I, I asked this question to my teacher. He's Catholic and he told no, me No, he that. got stumped? Your Catholic no. teacher got stumped? A lot of snack bar? He couldn't answer? <gasps> All right, let me answer. No, no, no. Like, like he answered, but he said that he doesn't like actually believe he's God in his flesh. <gasps> I don't know if that's a Catholic no way. belief or... And then Ahmadiyya's believe that Muhammad is not the last messenger of prophets. Who cares what some guy tells you who claims to be a Catholic? The official teaching of the Catholic Church is... Jesus is God. So when you quote me some Joe Schmo guy, who cares? Let's stick with the text. Now, that same chapter, Matthew 21, which you did not read all the way through, I want to show you Matthew 21. Let's read 12 to 16. You stopped at 11. All right. So Jesus entered the temple and drove out all who sold and bought in the temple. And he overturned the tables of the money changers and the seats of those who sold pigeons. He said to them, it is written, my house shall be called a house of prayer, but you make it a den of robbers and the blind and the lame came to him in the temple and he healed them. But when the chief priests and the scribes saw the wonderful things that he did and the children crying out in the, in the temple, Hosanna to the son of David, they were indignant. And they said to him, do you hear what these are saying? And Jesus said to them, yes. Have you never read out of the mouth of infants and nursing babies, you have pr prepared praise? Now, I want you to pay attention to what Jesus quoted. Tisham, this is the same chapter. When the children were praising Jesus, Hosanna to the son of David. The religious scholars got upset because they took this as blasphemy and said, don't you hear what they're saying? In other words, do something. And Jesus says, of course. Did you not read? He quotes Psalm chapter 8, verse 2, where the psalmist says, O oh, Yahweh, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. You have set your glory above the heavens. Out of the mouth of babies and infants, you have established strength because of your foes to steal the enemy and the avenger. Now, Hisham, do you see this, what Jesus quoted to justify the children worshiping him? He was telling the Jews, don't you know your Old Testament? In Psalm 8, it says that the babes and infants will praise God when they see and recognize God to silence his enemies who oppose him. So here was Jesus' enemies opposing him, and the children praised him and glorified him because they recognized who Jesus is to embarrass his enemies 
we didn't recognize that this Jesus is the Lord God of the psalm. Why did you just stop at verse 11? I mean, to be honest, like when I just see like when it says prophet, I wanted to just ask a Christian, maybe you can explain it to me a bit more. Like I'm not trying to debunk it. Can you ask me that question? Before I, because I'm not done with Matthew. And I'll let you ask, but I want to now show you another thing. Because Jesus is a prophet and a priest and a king because he's truly human. But he's more than that. He's God in the flesh. That's what we believe. But before we get there, the Quran agree, agrees that Allah is al-warith, the inheritor. He receives an inheritance. You're going to see where I'm going with this. I'll let you make your point. But let me first show you that that chapter, Jesus is claiming to be God, who is the son of God, who became man. But if you go to the Quran, he's going to read for you chapter 15 of the Quran, verse 23. Lo. And it is we, even we, who quicken and give death. And we are the inheritor. So Allah is speaking, saying, we are the inheritor. It's plural. And we give life and make that dead. So Allah is the one who is the inheritor. And who does he inherit from? Go to chapter 19 and read verse 40 for us. We, only we, inherit the earth and all who are thereon. And unto us they are returned. So are you saying, Hisham, the Quran says Allah is the inheritor, he inherits, he's the heir? Yeah. Okay, now, chapter 19, verse 80, because I'm going to show you what Jesus says. And we shall inherit from him that whatever he spake, and he will come unto us alone. Okay. So now, Allah says, we are the inheritors, we will inherit him and everything on the earth. So Allah is the heir, the inheritor, okay? And he's the best of those who inherit. Okay, so keep that in mind. Now, that same Matthew 21, Jesus speaks of the prophets being the servants of God, but then he says he's more than a prophet. Matthew 21, can you open up that same chapter for our fine-feathered friend? Jesus is going to give a parable where God owns a field, a vineyard, rents it out to people, and then he sends them servants who are the prophets. They are the yep. servants of, of God, you say Allah, the prophets. But then look who Jesus thinks he is. All right, so it says here another parable. There was a master of a house who planted a vineyard and put a fence around it and dug a wine press in it and built a tower and leased it to tenants and went into another country. When the season for fruit drew near, he sent his servants to the tenants to get his fruit. And the tenants took his servants and beat one, killed another, and stoned another. Again, he sent other servants, more than the first, and they did the same to them. Now pay attention, Hisham, this Jesus speaking. The master is God, the father. He owns a vineyard. The vineyard is Israel, and the rulers are the Jewish rulers. So the servants he sent are prophets. And I can show you that. Jeremiah 7, 25, my servants, the prophets. So they killed some prophets, beat others. But then he sent them one final one. Who is that final one? Matthew 21, 37. Who is he? Finally, he sent his son to them, saying, they will respect my son. Now pay attention, Hisham. That's the same chapter where they said he's a prophet, and a prophet cannot lie. So Prophet Jesus just said that I am the son of the owner, so I'm not a mere slave. The prophets are servants. I am the son of the owner whom he loves. He just showed you he's more than a prophet. He is the beloved son of the owner who is God. And he's also the heir, el because now read 3839. But when the tenants saw the son, they said to themselves, this is the heir. Come. Let us kill him and have his inheritance. Okay. And they took him and threw him out of the vineyard and killed him. Oh. Now, can I ask you a question, Ishaan? If Jesus said he is the beloved son and he's more than a servant and he's the heir, the heir owns whatever his father owns. So I'm going to ask you a question. You believe Allah owns the whole creation, right? Uh, yes. Okay, but Jesus said, I am the heir, meaning whatever my father owns belongs to me. Well, here, this is God. And Jesus says, I am el Warith, the heir. I own whatever belongs to the father. Since the father owns creation, Jesus says, creation is mine, because what's his is mine. I'm the heir. That means he owns heaven and earth. He owns creatures. He owns you, and he owns Muhammad. Do you believe all this? I mean, from a Muslim pers perspective, I wouldn't believe this, but I think if you compare, like, because me, like, as a Muslim, did I use the Quran. Did you not quote Matthew 21, and where you said Jesus is a prophet, and he's a prophet, he can't lie, right? But in that chapter, Prophet Jesus, who can't lie, says that children recognize who I am and they worship me because that's what children do when they see God. So Jesus saying the children worshiping me is to be expected because the psalmist said when children see God, they worship him because they recognize him. So he's telling his enemies they worship me to fulfill the psalm that said children praise God when they see him. So they say me. They know I am. I'm God. They worship me. And then Prophet Jesus said, I am the son of God who owns whatever God owns. 
And since God owns creation, I own creation. So how can Prophet Jesus lie? Because that's what you just quoted. I know, yeah, but like if, if you look, if you take verses from the Quran and like use it like with the Bible, it doesn't really make sense. Because for us, like for example, the Quran is my standard. So if, if but I you quoted Quran, Matthew. I didn't quote Matthew 21. Yeah. So I'm showing you if Matthew 21 is true, then what Jesus said must be blasphemy. Because if Jesus is a Muslim, he cannot say he's the heir. Because the Quran says Allah is the heir. So how can Jesus be a good Muslim and an honest prophet when he just claims something no Muslim prophet can claim and he claimed to be God in the flesh, the son of God who owns everything. Does the Quran say Allah is the truth who gives life because he is life? All right, let's see. Chapter 22, verse 6 and 7. Hilari Khan, this is because Allah, he is the truth. Ul Haq, the truth, the reality. And it is he who gives life to the dead. Pay attention. He gives light to the dead, and it is he who is able to do all things. And surely the hour is coming. There is no doubt about it. And certainly Allah will resurrect those who are in the grave. So what will Allah do? At the hour, at the last day, Allah will give light to those who are in the graves and bring them out of their graves, raise them to light out of their graves. Allah gives light to the dead, and he is the truth. That's what the Quran says. Keep in mind. So at the last hour, who's going to raise the dead to life out of their graves? Allah. Who gives light to the dead? Allah. Who is the truth? Al-Haq, Allah. All right. Chapter 23, verse 116 of the Quran. Wherefore, let God be exalted, the king, the truth, Al-Haq, Al-Haq. Chapter 30, verse 50 of the Quran. Watch. Chapter 30, verse 50. Okay. Look, therefore, chapter 30, verse 50, picked up, at the prince of Allah's mercy and creation, how he quickeneth, gives light to the earth after her death. Lo, he verily is the quickener of the dead, the resurrector of the dead. The one who gives light to the dead and he's able to do all things. So keep that in mind. What did Jesus say? Guys, get ready to be blown away. Are you ready? What did Jesus say? John 5, 21. For just as the father gives life and raises the dead, so too the son gives life to whom he is pleased. Ooh. Jesus is not the father, but he's equal to the father because he can do whatever the father does in the same way the father does it. But the father does things that only God can do. But then watch what John 5, 25 says. You ready? Remember the Quran says in 22, 7, that at the hour, Allah will raise the dead to life from their graves. Jesus speaking, for the hour is coming and has now come. Notice, the hour is coming and has now come where the dead will hear the voice of the Son of God and those who hear will live. Ooh, ah, Muhammad. Jesus said, at the hour, he, the Son of God, by his majestic, beautiful, all sovereign voice will give dead give the dead spiritual life but then watch john 5 20 29 do not marvel at this for the hour is coming when all who are in their tombs will hear his voice whose voice 25 said the voice of, the son of god and will come out when when lord the hour whose voice your voice the son of god come out of where the graves those who have done good to the resurrection life and those who have done evil to the resurrection of judgment so wait jesus just said i give light to the dead and at the hour, I will raise the dead physically from their graves, both the righteous and wicked, and will give spiritual life to the righteous who hear my voice. I do that at the hour. And yet the Quran says that's something only Allah does. John 14, verse 6. Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth. Adol Haq. There's those words again. al halaj got murdered for saying it. Jesus rose from the dead saying it. One was murdered and died. The other rose from the dead to become immortal after saying I am the way and the truth and the life, al-hayat. Now, those who know Arabic, you'll confirm. Did Jesus not just say, anul tariq wal haq wal hayat? I am the path to salvation, the truth and the life. But didn't the Muslims just say, if you say, I am the truth or even the life, you're saying, I am God? What about John 11, 25 to 27? Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection. One of the names of Allah, al-bayyith, the one who raises the dead. Jesus, Anul Bayith, Ana Al Bayith, Ana, I am the resurrection, the raiser of the dead, and the life, Al Hayat, the names of Allah. Jesus says, They're my names before Allah said it. Whoever believes in me, though he die, yet shall he live. And everyone who lives and believes in me shall never die. Do you believe this? She said to him, Yes, Lord, I believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God, who's coming into the world. And then Revelation 3.14, the risen Jesus speaking to John. Revelation 3.14. And to the angel of the church of Laodicea write, the words of the Amen, the faithful and true witness, the beginning of God's creation. But hold on. In Jeremiah 42.5, 
Jehovah said to be the true and faithful witness. But Jesus in Revelation 3.14 says, I am the faithful and true witness. <laughs> because the Hebrew Bible and the Quran, plagiarizing the Bible, acknowledges the first and the last as the names of the only true God. And awwal wal akhir are the names you can only ascribe to the true God. And I'll break it down. I've done sessions on these, but I'll break it down. Isaiah 41.4, who has performed and done this, calling generations from the beginning? I, the Lord, Yahuwah, the first and with the last, I am he. This tells you what it means to be first and the last. If you want to know what first and last means, here it is. Notice what first and last means here, God tells you. Who has performed and done this? Who has brought about creation, calling the generations from the beginning? Now, note that statement. God is saying, who has created all generations of creatures? Who is the one who brought creation into being? And who is the one who's constantly bringing forth another generation to replace the previous one? One generation of humans passes, another generation takes its place. One generation of animals, plant life, tree life, marine life passes, another generation takes its place. Who is doing that? Who's constantly creating new generations of creatures to replace the previous one until the end? I, Jehovah, because I was there from the first generation, and I'll be there with the very last generation. First and the last means God was there from the start of creation. He began creation. He created it. So he's there from the beginning, from the start. He was there when the first generation of creatures came into being because he created them. And because he's before creation and his years never end and he's almighty over creation, he remains with every generation of creatures, overseeing them, preserving them, giving them life until the end of the age where he'll be there with the very last generation of creatures. So first and the last means that God was there before creation, so he's beginningless. And because he's beginningless, his years never end, he'll be there throughout generations until the last generation to the end of the age because he's timeless, beginningless, almighty, and ever-living. So he can be with every generation to the end. That's why first and the last cannot be ascribed to a creature. A creature has a beginning and has an end, and his life depends on the one who is the first and the last. Okay, you understand why this title, these names cannot be given to a creature? Isaiah 44, verse 6. Thus says the Lord, Yahuwah, the King of Israel and his Redeemer, Yahuwah of hosts, I am the first and I am the last. Besides me, there is no God. Isaiah 48, 12. Listen to me, O Jacob, and Israel, whom I call. I am he. I am the first and I am the last. Now, Revelation 21, 6 to 7. Notice what God says. Revelation 21, 6 to 7. And he said to me, it is done. I am the Alpha and Omega beginning and the end. These are different ways of saying the first and the last. How do I know? Well, if you're the first, then you're the beginning. If you're the last, then you're the end. You were there at the beginning, at the first. You'll be there at the end, at the last. Alpha and Omega are the first and last letters of the Greek alphabet. So the Greek alphabet starts, begins with Alpha, ends with Omega. So to say I'm Alpha and Omega is simply another way of saying I'm the first and last. Simply another way of saying I'm the beginning and the end. In English, you would say, I am A and Z, beginning and the end, first and the last. But who's saying this? Let's finish it. To the thirsty, I will give from the spring of the water of life without payment. The one who conquers will have this heritage, and I will be his God. I repeat, I'll be his God, and he'll be my son. See, no way can a creature claim these titles. Only one who is God of creation, God of humanity, God of believers can say, I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. Now, does the Quran agree in plagiarizing these names of God? Does it agree? Only God can say this? Well, let's read. Chapter 57, verse 3 of the Quran. 57, verse 3. Picked off. He is the first and the last. and awwal wal akhir The outward and the inward. And he is knower of all things. Chapter 92, verse 13 of the Quran. Chapter 92, verse 13. And to us belong the last and the first. See, the first create creatures belong to us. The last belongs to us. Why? Because we're the first and the last. So the crowd agrees. But hold on. Revelation 1, 17 to 18. Revelation 1, 17 to 18. When I saw him, I fell at his feet as though dead. But he laid his right hand on me saying, Revelation 1, 17, 18. Fear not, I am the first and the last and the living one. I died. Wait, wait, wait. Who are you again? The first and last. But you said you died. Yep. I'm the first and last who died, and behold, I'm alive forevermore, and I have the keys of death and Hades. So when did Jehovah die? When did Allah die? When he became flesh, the man Christ Jesus, and experienced a human death without ceasing. That's when Jehovah died, who was the first and the last. Okay, now, Revelation 2, 8. Jesus again speaking to John. Revelation 2, 8. Jesus again speaking to John. And to the angel of the church in Smyrna write, the words of the first and the last who died 
and came to life. The first and the last who died and came to life. One more time for the glory of the Trinity. The first and the last who died and came to life. Fire! All right. Revelation 22, verses 12, 13, verse 16 and 20. Revelation chapter 22, verses 12 to 13, and verse 16 and 20. Okay. Here it is. So if you miss the number, who's speaking here? Who's speaking here? Revelation 22, verse 12, 13, 16 and 20. Behold, I am coming soon. Please remember those words. I am coming soon, bringing my recompense with me. So I'm coming to judge. I'm coming to repay. I'm coming to reward. I am coming soon, bringing my recompense with me to repay everyone for what he has done. I am the Alpha and Omega, the first and last, the beginning and the end. Who are you? I am the Alpha and Omega, the, begin the first and last, the beginning and the end. And when are you coming? I am coming soon. I, Jesus. So 16, we're told who the speaker is. I, Jesus, have sent my angel to testify to you about these things for the churches. I am the root and descendant of David, the bright morning star. Well, in case you didn't get it, that is Jesus speaking in 12 to 13, because he says in 16, I, Jesus, am the one speaking. But let's say you didn't get it. Remember what Revelation 22, 12, 13 said? Behold, I am coming soon. I am Alpha and Omega, first and last, the beginning and the end. Now notice verse 20, same chapter. He who testifies to these things says, Surely I am coming soon. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. I am coming soon. Come, Lord Jesus. I am coming soon. Alpha and Omega, first and last, beginning and the end. 